Hi guys, welcome back. So it's absolutely no secret I hate shooting in the winter. I don't like the cold, don't like the rain. I'd much rather be shooting somewhere nice and warm. But today in this video, we're going to look at some of the tips and tricks that I've used over the years to make it a slightly more bearable experience and hopefully help you perform at your optimum when the temperature drops. We're going to look at acclimatizing the rifles so that they are less susceptible to weird point of impact shifts through temperature and humidity change. We're going to look at some minor adjustments you might want to make to the rifle if you're wearing bulkier winter clothing. And when we get back home later on, we're also going to look at areas of your rifles that you should be looking and potentially oiling as well if they've got soaking wet. We start back in the shed early this morning before I came out and we'll start looking straight away the most important tip of the lot, how to acclimatise this stuff before you bring it out from indoors. So let's get into it. Right then guys, we're going out this morning for a bit of shooting. I'm up early. Now this is, of all of the tips, this is probably the single most important one and it can really make or break your start of a shoot. The rifle's been stored indoors in the cabinet. It's currently probably 16, 17 degrees. It's a little over freezing outside and it's probably eight, seven degrees, eight degrees in the shed here at the moment. Now this is cooling down. We have got a lot of dissimilar metals in the rifle itself and in the scope, of course, all the lenses, their carriers. As the temperature drops, everything is likely to contract slightly. Wooden stocks may start to move slightly. Laminate is not so prone to movement as some hardwood stocks. Some of your tactical, your plasticky type stocks, they can also move. Despite being generally pretty stable, some of those can warp. And of course that can put weird pressures on your air cylinders and cause point of impact shifts. You take it straight out to just above freezing. The whole thing is going to be contracting. It's all going to be moving. It'll end up getting covered in condensation. First thing that I always do is if you've got flip up covers or bikini covers, get those off straight away. We don't want the lenses here to be slightly insulated. If you imagine that they're on at the moment, there's a little bit of an air gap in there. It will take longer for them to cool down than when they're exposed like they are now. I first started doing this probably 10, 12 years ago, maybe 10 years ago. We were at the Huntsfield Target World Championships. That historically was a shot over the Easter weekend and it was generally pretty cold and pretty horrible. When you're staying away, you're in a hotel room, whatever B&B, you tend to whack the heating up. Now, a certain ex-world champion HFT shooter and well-regarded tuner took my rifle off of me the night before the shoot and we actually had the landlord of the pub that we stayed at locked all the rifles in an outbuilding overnight. And I'm like, what on earth are we doing this for? Sure enough, you have a hot rifle, you take it straight out into the cold, it can be all over the place for a small amount of time whilst everything settles down. Acclimatising your rifle, bringing it down to temperature slowly before you start using it will mean that when we do get out onto a course or we get out to do our whatever we're shooting at, everything should have settled down slightly. So I'm going to leave it out here for a little while, I'm going to keep a close eye on it, I'm going to lock the shed of course, at no point should this be left unattended, children can't get near them, certainly in the UK now it, you're illegally obliged to make sure that children can't get near this, so always bear that in mind, you need to put it somewhere safe, if you've got a garage or something like that, if you could put these out even the night before, safely lock them away so they can come down to temperature slowly, the slower you can do it the better. The next most important thing is always keep your baseball cap in your rifle bag. Even though it's completely gray out today, it looks like it might snow at any moment, very little chance of the sun coming out. But if it does, especially in the winter when the sun is low, you'll definitely regret not keeping your cap in your bag. So that always stays in the bag. These cotton pillowcases in here, or some old towels or anything like that are perfect to keep the gun dried off. If it gets soaked between shots, you can get it dried off as best you can between shots. It'll also help if the rifle gets dunked in some sort of damp mud, anything like that gets wet. We've just got a spare cloth here to keep this dried off as best as possible. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to rain and I'm certainly not going to be filming out in the rain, but certainly a really good idea to keep yourself some old cloths in the bottom there. I also keep a couple of spare cloths in the car in case this lot gets completely sodden wet. I can at least attempt to dry the rifle off a little bit before it gets loaded back up into the bag. So cap always stays in there, even in the depths of winter. Shooting glove, scope caps are now off and the rifle can sit in this bag for a little while. Pop that in there like that, put that under the fore end. Right, nearly forgot, chronograph. This is probably the most important thing actually, especially if you haven't had your rifle for particularly long. If you're going into your first winter with a new rifle, we do need to make a note of whether it slows down, whether it stays the same pellet speeds, whatever. We need to make a note of that. 
some rifles really don't like the cold. My 9015, for instance, until it's fully acclimatized, the outside temperature is all over the place. Once it has acclimatized, it will generally be in the region of seven to 10 feet per second slower than it would do at say 20 degrees C if it's just above freezing. So not a big drop. Some rifles are particularly prone to slowing down quite a lot. The HW100, for instance, it's not designed for, but they often have quite a lot of excess lubricant in the action, especially sort of oil on the hammer. As it cools down, the viscosity increases of any oil and grease that's in there, and it can slow the hammer travel down, which can, of course, mean that you end up with a lower pellet speed than you want. Chronoing it, it'll also give you a good idea whether you need to get it stripped down, remove any excess lubricant from the insides of the rifle. So that's going in there. I'm going to get myself a hot drink, let this come down to temperature for a little bit longer, and then we're going to get out the farm. So I'll see you up there. Right then guys, we're here. So it's just a little above freezing. I'm well wrapped up. Now you've probably noticed in a few of the last videos, now the temperature's dropped, I always try and wear the same outfit. So I've got my thermals on, I've got my same manky work jumpers on, and then I've got my little fleece lined little jacket on. Now I tend to prefer running a lot of layers as opposed to sort of a couple of big jackets. There's gonna be absolutely tons of info on YouTube on how best to wrap up. I'm not gonna bore you with all of that lot. But consistency is always the key, as with all of our shooting, being consistent in your setup, being methodical, and even down to the clothing that you wear is incredibly important. Great big puffy jumper on at the moment, of course, it's effectively reduced my length of pull slightly. Of course, a lot of hunting rifles, a lot of sporting rifles aren't anywhere near as adjustable as this. But in a lot of cases, you may well find that you want to reduce the length of pull slightly that will sort of make up for your extra padding in your clothing. So certainly something to consider. That's why it's always wise to make sure you wear the same clothing for each trip if you can do. So I'm gonna get this zeroed up quickly now. I've got some new pellets to test. In a moment, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with the trigger on here as well. Okay, so I've just got a couple of shots off down range. It's now been a couple of hours since I brought this outdoors, started to acclimatize it from being inside. There's no signs of any condensation on the action, on the scope, or any of the lenses. After a couple of hours, this should now have settled down nicely. A few shots down range confirmed that there's no weird point of impact shifts. Now the Catran is a little bit pedantic when it gets cold. That's on account of the shrouded barrel on there. It's made up of multiple sections that are all screwed together. It normally needs a couple of additional clicks to the right when it gets cold. I normally just aim off accordingly. Just down to the design of that, a lot of barrels that have shrouds on them, and particularly the Anschutz, the 9015 from factory came with a bonded on stainless outer shroud. That would move quite a lot when it got particularly cold. Of course, that's designed to be shot indoors, a fairly stable temperature and not really designed to deal with the elements. This seems to be pretty good so far, although it's not as cold as I will potentially be shooting it. We're just above freezing. We will keep monitoring it and see if there is any weird shifts as the temperature drops even further in the year or beginning of next year, should I say. If you happen to shoot with a glove on your right hand, now I only ever really shoot with a glove on my left hand. You've seen my shooting glove that just supports the fore end of the rifle or the back end here. But if you run a glove on your trigger hand, obviously I'm a right handed shooter. So I, if I had a glove on this hand, you may well find you want to reduce the trigger reach slightly because of the padding in your fingers. You may well find that reducing the trigger reach to accommodate for that glove is a wise idea as is potentially increasing the weight of the trigger brake. I don't have the trigger weight set or the trigger brake weight set particularly light on this or the 9015, so I'm pretty safe. But certainly some of my other rifles, my older Steyr, I had the trigger set very light on that. When I got cold, you lose a bit of dexterity in your fingertips, especially if you've got a glove on. It's a very, very wise idea to consider increasing the trigger brake weight. It'll just make it a bit safer, less for you to think about, less to worry about that that shot might escape you. Again, you should never be pointing the rifle where you don't want to shoot it, but with cold hands, things do happen. And I've seen it quite a few times over the years on the target circuit where people have let a shot off a little bit quicker than they anticipated because they didn't quite have the dexterity in their fingertips because it was cold. So that's quite an important one. If you saw the last video, I added a couple of extra throw levers on here. If you're working in gloves or you've got colder hands, having something of an additional throw lever a little bit bigger, certainly again, gonna be useful. I'll put a link up, up here somewhere, hopefully, if I can work out how to do it so you can see the video where I put these breakaway coasters on. I'm gonna do a little bit more shooting with this now, with these new pellets I've got to test, and I'll um, catch you in a moment. 
Right, so I've been shooting these new pellets now for a little while. They're performing pretty well. There'll be a full video on those early next year, I should think. So far, my hands are still nice and warm. I haven't had my glove on yet, but I can feel my fingertips are starting to get a little bit cold. So important one, you've got to know when it's time to pack up. If you are getting cold, it's really not going to be a good idea to try and stay out too long because you're just going to go to pot. Your accuracy is going to be all over the place. You're going to end up losing your concentration. At the moment, we're still fine. We've got plenty of time left before I get a bit too cold. If you're out on a HFT course, for instance, you're going to be moving between pegs. You're going to be relatively active. If you're sat at a bench shooting, you're only going to get a certain amount of time before your core temperature starts to come down a little bit and then you're just going to get the ump. We're all right for the moment, just keeping an eye on it, just paying attention to the surroundings and whether we're getting cold or not. If I do start to feel like I'm getting cold and can't concentrate or anything's going not quite to plan, that's the time to go home when it gets cold. Another important one though, I see a lot of guys shooting, and I do as well, we're all guilty of it, shoot with your hood up. Now that's absolutely fine, but if you're going to shoot with your hood up a lot in the winter, you're probably going to want to make some minor cheek adjustments. Of course, now you've got the padding against your face, it's going to push you off the other way. So if you are going to shoot with it, either shoot without your hood up, or if you are going to shoot with your hood up, then make adjustments to the cheek piece. And the same if you grind your beard out. I mean, this probably won't apply to many of the women, but if you've got a bit of a beard going, maybe just double check that your cheek piece position is as it ought to be. I mean, it's not going to add an awful lot of bulk to your face, obviously, but it's just worth checking. Again, going through all of these little bits of routine, just double checking. It's just going to rule out, especially when you're cold, things aren't going to plan. It's just going to be a few less things to think about and worry about. Right, so I've been up here a little while now. I've shot a couple of cards. I've tested my pellets that I needed to do today. My hands are still nice and warm, which is good. It's starting to get a little bit colder now. I don't really ever want to wear a glove on my right hand if I can help it. My back, luckily, is also still nice and warm. Now, that's for me personally, that is absolutely the worst thing. When I get a cold back, that's it, I'm done. It just destroys me. But well wrapped up, everything's tucked in, ready to go home. Now, it hasn't rained today, as you can see. This is now nice and cold. This is probably only a few degrees in temperature. We do need to be a little bit careful when we take this back home and get it indoors because we'll almost certainly get some condensation on it. So we're gonna repeat the process the other way around from this morning. It's gonna go into the shed first before going back indoors. Again, it's just a case of removing sort of extremes of temperature. We don't want any condensation to get underneath the air cylinder between the stock. When I do get home, I'm gonna show you a couple of things and a couple of ways how you can strip your rifle down, just remove them from the stocks and where to pay attention to should you need to do any oiling. So I'm gonna pop this in its bag now and I'll see you at home. Right then guys, we're back. It's been in its bag, it's been in the car on the way back. At the moment, there's no signs of condensation on here or anything like that. The temperature's actually come up outside. It's probably about five or six degrees now. So all I'm going to do with this is leave it in its bag with the bag open out here for a little while before then taking it indoors later on, just keep an eye on it. If there's any signs of condensation on the air cylinder or your barrels, you really do want to keep them wiped off as best you can. I'm just gonna grab my Ultimate Sporter and I'm gonna show you what to look for. If your rifle's got absolutely soaked, I'm gonna show you some of the points in the stock and on the action that you really should pay attention to. So I'll bring it over now. Right, so here's my Ultimate Sporter. We're just gonna use this as a demonstration. Now, from factory, they come with a blued cylinder on here. If it's got damp, you want to dab this off with some paper towel, dry cloth, something like that. Get as much moisture off of there as you physically can do before giving it a wipe over with an oily rag. One of the most important things to pay attention to actually is your stocks. Now, most factory stocks are lacquered by Manelli or whoever made them. They always have a nice coat on the outside, but inside of the inlets here, you'll often find that actually they're not as well lacquered as you would like. So if it's got damp, you really want to pay very good attention in all these little nooks and crannies in here to make sure that you've got no moisture ingress into the laminate. Now, if you have, you'll notice it goes slightly fuzzy. If it's got soaked, you'll sort of feel it let it dry outdoors and then take it indoors once it's sort of acclimatized again but whatever you do don't go and stick this on top of a radiator or any direct heat sources just allow it to come up to room temperature in its own time and just periodically keep a check on it if you notice there's any fuzzy spots maybe in the back of the action at the back here around your gauge cutouts not necessary specific to the ultimate sporter but most rifle stocks are going to have little nooks and crannies inside if there is signs of moisture ingress you're definitely once it's dried going to want to get some oil on here now a good finger full of danish oil or true oil or something like that 
anything is better than nothing in this instance. So get yourself in there, just on the old fingertip, work it in and that should seal it up, but make sure that the thing is fully dry before you do that. Once it's had a chance to dry, then you can reassemble and put it all away. So just a minor bit of maintenance, keep an eye on it, certainly look in all of these little areas if you've got rail sections. Just double check everything going into the winter because the last thing you want to do is leave this in a bag, damp, bit of moisture under the air cylinder. It might all swell up and it might, other than wrecking the stock, it might suddenly mean that the action itself is not as accurate as it once was if it's getting weird pressure in weird places. So a little bit to think about, guys. Hopefully some cool tips there that will make dealing with the winter weather that little bit more bearable. This is probably going to be the last video before Christmas now, I should think. So I will probably catch up with you some other little bits and pieces after that. But have a great one and I will see you next year, I should imagine.